Hello teachers and welcome back. Here's part three of three for our lesson five. And as you know, we're focusing in on the channel 21 and cultural part of the Give Me Five series. So now we're going back to our reading for Spring Hill School. And as you remember, we had an interesting introduction that was just a, a blind reading, or you could call it a cold reading, or you could call it a cold start. Just throwing the kids in the deep end, I'm challenging them, and now I'm going to do the teaching part of it. So the first things first, I'm gonna uh, increase their interest by introducing a game. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to ask the students to read. Now, again, I'm not going to be um, too harsh on their grades, okay? I'm just gonna give them team points. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I want them to get familiar again with this, okay? And as they are getting familiar with it, I'm going to be helping them by writing the <clears throat> vocabulary, the target vocabulary on the board, as well as they are going to be repeating it and reading it at the same time. So that is the reason why I'm approaching this in a slightly different way. Once the kids have finished reading, okay, I'll give them a score. It was four, and not five or three or whatever it was. Thank you very much, team A, sit down and they sit down. Now I'm gonna move on to team B. And team B will read the other two paragraphs and then I will be continuing to write all of the things on the board, <clears throat> okay. Now, again, I'm giving them team points, not individual points, because it's a general kind of introduction to this content. So I had a, a very cold start at the beginning. This is slightly less cold. And then later on, I'll, I'll then give them individual points for their reading skills. But by doing this, I have now um, exposed them to the content many times. Briefly, <clears throat> roughly, in an overview kind of way, but that is the purpose of what I am doing here. Okay. Now, once we have had that reading, okay, we will then go over the vocabulary, and I will then make sure that the students can pronounce all of those words perfectly well, and I will make sure that they understand what Gaelic football is. They, they need to understand what hurling is. Um, and what a tin whistle, for example, sounds like, okay? They also need to know what is tradition or traditional. They also need to know what practicing about your particular hobby is all about. Um, and so they need to know all of the extensive vocabulary inside this particular reading. Okay, now the reason for this um, <clears throat> important focus on the vocabulary is because so much of what is going to come relies on them being able to read those words correctly and of course understand what they are. So now I'm going to ask extensive questions. Who plays Gaelic football? And then of course the students are gonna put up their hands. The next one, what do you do in hurling? Okay, number three, why does Pat like to play the tin whistle? Number four, and now again, this is just uh, volunteer questions. Number five, how is Gaelic football different from European football? Now that is the most difficult question that I have designed. Now the reason why I have done that is because it's not a content-based question. It's slightly abstract. Students have to know what is the difference between Gaelic football and European football, which you have already explained. And now they've got to think, okay, well, European football is like this, 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 and this. You cannot touch the ball. You have a big green field. You don't wear special anything. And so therefore it's a very tricky question. And this is how you as a teacher are needing to push your students. Make it easy enough, but then step ladder them up to those very strange or difficult or abstract questions and allow them to, to, to use their English. Okay, so that is the purpose behind this particular question. Now you can make the, the questions as difficult or as easy as, as you wish. However, um, it is still your duty to make sure that they are able to uh, approach these abstract questions. <clears throat> All right, now once I've done the questions, um, I will then ask the students, please close your books. And I will erase those few words on the top of the board because they were not particularly important and they're not particularly important to this part of the lesson. 
<clears throat> By this stage, my students should be able to say, Shona, Teresa, Liam, and Pat with no problem. Gaelic football, Irish dancing, hurling, tin whistle, no problem. Kick, skip, jump, run, da 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 da, with no problem at all. Why? Because if they are unable to say these words properly, then they're unable to then move on to the next activity. And the next activity is this it's making sentences. Now, what I'm also doing is okay, so I've written down the, the first sentence on the board as a model, all right? And this is what I want the students to then be able to say. Now, for Give Me Five Book Three and above, obviously our students are needing to use their English, not just simply be fed content and then repeat content. They need to be able to use it. And in this particular way, I am creating a, a sentence pattern that I want them to then follow. Now it's kind of simple, it's present simple, right? So she likes Gaelic football, she carries and kicks the ball, she plays on Fridays. Now it's kind of simple and I've made it simple just as an example. You guys can make it as tricky as you wish. You could make it, uh, Shona doesn't like Irish dancing. She doesn't skip and jump. She uh, has Gaelic football on Fridays. Okay, you know what I mean? So the meaning is that you can make, make that sentence in any which fashion you want. And then once you've made a sentence pattern for the kids to then follow, then you can ask your individual students to come up to the board. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna do one, two, three, four, basically. And then they're gonna read out a sentence. So one will be Teresa, one will be Liam, and one will be Pat. And then you just rotate as many kids as you possibly have time for. All right, there we go. So that was now a speaking exercise and you can give them points, individual points for that speaking exercise. You can judge them on their pronunciation, you can judge them on their grammar and you can judge them on their fluency. So that's a, a really nice uh, broad, broad uh, activity for the kids to then participate in. All right, oopsie, excuse me about that. All right, now I will then put the questions that I asked orally on the board. Remember we had the, the content out for the students to then read and then the teacher was uh, asking the questions and the students were volunteering answers. Now for me to write the sentences on the board, the exact questions that I was speaking out is an important mm, indication for me as the teacher because the students are now gonna open up their notebooks and they're gonna write down those answers. In this way, I will be able to check if the students who were able to answer it orally can actually write it down correctly, as well as did all of the weaker students actually understand what was going on. So I have used the exact same questions that I've asked before in the writing exercise. The kids take out the notebooks, write, 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 and then you check. Okay? And then of course you can go over the correct answers. So that would take some time, um, but it's a really necessary part for you as the teacher to understand if the students got it or not. All right, now, if you have time, which I don't think you would, but I include this anyway. Um, I include this because some classes have got really advanced kids and they're really just amazing and they just go through content very, very quickly. I have taken out a paragraph, okay? I've taken out one of those paragraphs in the, um, in the reading. And it says, my name is Teresa, my favorite activity is Irish dancing, da, 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 da. And as you can see, I have underlined key words there. So what you can do is you can ask the students to take out their reading books and they will underline those key words. And of course, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask the students to substitute. So for example, me, Stephen. So my name is Teacher Stephen, okay? And my favorite activity is uh, tennis, maybe, okay? I go to a, uh, a tennis court every Monday and Wednesday after school. It's good fun because I can hit a ball and run around, okay? Excuse me for the spelling there. We wear white clothes and uh, headbands too. They're very silly, okay? Whatever it is that you want to write. Now, I, you could include traditional things, sapak um, takro, but I think that that, is, that, that particular activity is a Thailand game, but I know that it is played in Vietnam. It's that uh, rattan ball that people kick with their feet over a net, that particular game. And so what I'm saying is, is that while you might be able to have some traditional sports, 
mm, it might be that much more complex and not really necessary to this particular activity. However, if you as a teacher want to bring traditional games into the classroom, that is up to you. Make sure to provide the specific vocabulary that goes with that. You'd have to brainstorm it with the kids. You'd have to spend some time helping them all understand it. And then they could either finish it, uh, finish, complete it in the class time, or they could start it in the class time and finish it at home, depending on your time constraints in the lesson. Yeah. All right. So teachers, that has been quite the activity, I have to say. And it's very dense. It's very um, dense, I should say. I wouldn't say complex. It's just dense. It's a lot to get through. Kids have got to be able to follow every step of the way. Otherwise, they will get left behind. And you as the teacher have got to be uh, on your toes in order to make sure that all of those um, strategies are covered well. All right. So teachers, thank you very much. You tally your scores and you then say goodbye to your kids. And that is now the end of lesson five. So I hope you enjoyed that clip and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.